Abraham. Abraham. Abraham was not a man. Oh, let me see. He was a nobody. At 75 years, the man was struggling. He was a non entity. He was a barren man. He was under a curse. He was childless. He was a poor man. He was despised in the city. But when God called him, God began to give him the order of God. How God blesses. Abraham, come out from your country, from your people, from your father's uh, house. And go to a land that I will show you. Then he began the journey with the Lord. He became now a believer of Jehovah God. The God of heaven. Because before this, he was, he was with his father, Terah. Who was an idolater. Who was worshipping other gods. Now, he has become a believer of Jehovah God. And God begins to give him formula. How God will help him. He can even restore him. It doesn't matter how long it has taken. With the problem of uh, not succeeding. Not, not bearing fruit. Uh, being a failure. Suffering under curses. And, and many oppression. Then, finally, Abraham. I want to help you. As much as it appears you are too late. You are 75. I want to help you. I want to help an old man like you. I want to do a thing that shall be transgenerational. Abraham, give me your son, your only son. I thought after God has appeared to you, you don't need givings. See how many times God had appeared to him. Before he asked for an offering of his son, a giving of his son, a sacrifice of his son, he had already walked with the Lord for a long time. God had already appeared to him many times. But Abraham, I want to help you out of this. I want to decorate your life. I want to glorify your life. I want, you to, make, I want to make you a general in all generations. How is it going to be? Give me your son. Burn your son as a sacrifice. When you give, you see that was not going to be a simple thing. When you give your son, I will see that is now faith. That is a manifestation that you believe in me. You believe in me. And Abraham carried his son. And he put him on the altar. And he had already lifted up his hand and his knife to slay the boy. Then God said, this man has done it already in his heart. He does not have to do it physically. Abraham, I have seen your faith by your giving. Hey, from today, you are not just a man. Today, I make you a nation. It was the faith of giving of Abraham that turned him from a man into a nation and actually into nations. Do you want to be helped by God? His barrenness was broken. God blessed him. He did not give him just sons. He gave him nations. Today as we talk about Abraham, we call him the father of nations. For in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because thou hast obeyed my voice. If you want to be turned. In your situation. Your captivity you want it to be turned. You want things to look differently by the hand of God. Where is your faith? And your faith has to do with your giving. Number two. We see David. David gave a sacrifice. And God stopped a plague. God stopped a plague. Can you just imagine? In 2 Samuel 24, we are told <laughs> that David had counted the people and God was angry with it. Then there was a plague that came upon the people, the nation. And then 70,000 people died. People were dying like popcorns. Just like that. People were dying. God, what shall I do? Then David, being a wise man, he had seen it in the world. That God honors givings. God honors sacrifices. He offered, he committed himself to offer the sacrifice. Then another king saw David's intention. He said, ah, David, you are the king. I will do everything for you. Uh, Arauna said, you don't have to worry. What is it you want? I want to give it for free. David said, no, no, no. no. I will not offer to God. That which cost me nothing, it has to touch me. It has to be a giving that is touching. You know, people want to give to God what does not touch them. People want, that's why we see, even when we come to giving, we have been taught that you give what you, 
cannot use. We have seen in the past when people are told to donate clothes to give to the poor. Some people went and collected their worn out clothes. Their clothes that are not in good shape. Because of course it costs you nothing to give you that which is worthless. When somebody wants to give out something, they will look for that something that is not of any value. But David said, no, 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 no. I will not offer to God that which costs me nothing. Because I know God will remember sacrifices. He will, not, he will not just remember what I offered, which was not touching, which was not hurting, that which did not move me at all. And he gave a sacrifice. And the plague stopped. Can you just imagine? Plague was stopped. The nation was spared. The city was spared. The people were spared. I feel if there has been something in your life, including physical death, you can stop it by your faith. How? You can demonstrate your faith by giving. You can say, I raise a sacrifice even for my family. I raise a sacrifice even for my children. Remember how I'm using the word sacrifice. It is something that touches you. I am not saying that this sacrifice is now replaced in the place of Jesus. There is nothing that can take the place of Jesus. Because sometimes when we use the word sacrifice, people say, ah, there is no other sacrifice but Jesus. There is no giving or any human act that can take the place of Jesus. But we are demanded to demonstrate our faith in the same Jesus. And to demonstrate our faith, the best way is by giving. Faith without action is dead. David stopped that plague that was so dangerous by an action of giving. And the plague was stopped and there was no more death. What shall we say of Solomon? Solomon, Solomon, a naive young man. He said, hey, I'm just a child. How can I take care of the nation of God? How can I take care of this? How can I rule this nation? Lord, I'm just a small boy. Hey. And then he went and offered a 1,000 oxen sacrifice. That is no joke. 1,000 oxen. 1,000 oxen. Today, if you had 1,000 oxen coming to this city, you will see chaos. We will not even have a place to walk in. Cars will stop. The city will be put on a standstill. Because a thousand cattle is no joke. You don't need one acre, five acres to put a thousand cattle. Too many. He slaughtered all of them before the Lord. And he went to sleep. When he went to, us to sleep, the Lord appeared to him. Young man, I have seen your faith. I have not only heard your prayer, I have seen your faith. What do you want me to do? And the guy said, wisdom. And God said, you have demonstrated your faith in a big way. I'll give you the wisdom you have asked for. And every other thing that you have not even asked for. I'm going to be your helper. I'll help you. I'll help you so much. You have plenty of gold. Plenty of silver. Plenty of wisdom. Plenty of honor. Plenty of peace. Did you know? That is the time. All the enemies of Israel were silenced. Including the Philistines. The 40 years of the reign of Solomon. There was nobody raising a sword. Against the nation of Israel. Why? God came to help him. God came to help him. Because somebody offered a sacrifice. Demonstrated his faith. By giving. F giving. Every time you do faith. By giving. God sees that faith. And he comes to help you. It is unto you according to your faith. 